I get a lot of questions about the complications of a watch. The more complex it is, and people want to understand how that works. But let's take a minute to step back and try to explain how a basic watch works, what the power mechanism inside the watch does. Our basic watch has two hands. We have an hour hand and a minute hand. If we add a second hand to that, that's adding a complication. We add a calendar to it, that's adding a complication. We put an automatic device on the bottom of the watch to keep it wound up and improve isochronism. That's adding a complication. You can add so many complications to a watch, be it a minute repeater, be it an annual calendar, be it a perpetual calendar. Every time you add something to that watch, you're adding a complication to it. All a mechanical watch is, it's a controlled release of the mainspring. So when you pick up a mechanical watch and you wind it up, you're winding up the barrel of that main, or the mainspring inside that barrel. Power has to go somewhere. It's got to be released somewhere. So it goes down a gear train. You start with the barrel, you go to your great wheel, you go to your third wheel, you go to your fourth wheel, escape wheel. As you go down that line, the wheels get smaller and smaller, the teeth get finer and finer, the pivots get finer and finer because you have less power towards the end of that train. And you get to the anchor. The anchor, either it tells the watch when to release one click. So when you hear a watch ticking, every time you hear a tick, that anchor is dropping a tooth. It's either, it's hitting, hitting, hitting. What's causing it to do that? The balance. You have inertia applied to the balance. It winds itself up one way. The, the motion of the, the mainspring will throw that balance one way, then the hairspring brings it back the other way. So you have power implied and you have power released. So it's a symphony of power release from the mainspring to the escape wheel. And what that escape wheel is doing, it's controlling how fast or how rapid that power is being released. And the wheels further up are actually recording that. And that's where our hands come in play. The hands will be either on the great wheel or the third wheel. Your fourth wheel is actually a one rotation a minute. So that's historically your second wheel. It's, it's a symphony of motion. So inside the watch at all times, the pieces that are moving faster are further down the train, such as the escape wheel. The barrel itself, it's moving so slow that you can't see it move. It's just a constant release of power though. And what the hands do, the hands are your indicator of how fast that power is being released. I like a manual wine watch because when you have that manual wine watch, you pick it up and the first thing you do to it is either unscrew the crown or you grab that crown and you wind it. When you wind that, you have a personal connection with that watch because you're actually, you're putting the power back into that little machine that you're going to strap onto your wrist. So you wind that up and you actually feel that tension. You feel that spring reaching its, its maximum power. There's a couple things that, that make a watch more precise than other ones, and a lot of it has to do with the vibrations of the balance. The more teeth there are on the escape wheel, the faster the vibrations on the balance, the more air that could be introduced into the watch. And as when I talk about error, if you, if you have a, a variance somewhere, if you have much more of something, if you have 28,800 vibrations per hour, you have more, more room for air in that than if you have 18,000. So watches historically, they were made at 18,000. Now watches are made at 36,000. They run even faster. And where you see the difference is, if you watch your second hand, a slower beat watch is gonna have a slower second hand. You'll actually see those steps come through where a faster beat watch will actually be very, very smooth. We talk about the variation in timekeeping of a watch. We have positional error. And a positional error has to do with the internal balancing of the components it has to do with the, the position of the hairspring and the weight of the hairspring in different positions. Uh, Breguet tried to do away with this by inventing the tourbillon, which actually on a sitting watch, it would change, it, it would put that gravitational pull in 360 degrees every minute, every 20 seconds, uh, every 30 seconds, depending on how fast that tourbillon cage moves. Now, when you talk about a tourbillon on a watch, you really don't need that because your watch is in motion so much. My watch moves all over the place. So my watch is in different positions daily. So a tourbillon wouldn't benefit me because I would actually be imparting more air into the watch than, than, than what's already there. Finding that balance between the fastest rate and the slowest rate and making that as small as you can, that's something we call delta. So we wanna bring that delta in as tight as we can so the fastest rate and the slowest rate 
positionally won't matter. And they kind of counteract each other. One of the things we do when we have some customers, they want a really precision watch. They want that watch. They want to know they're going to check that watch every day. They're going to circumnavigate the globe and they want to end up within 10 feet of where they started. What I'll do is I'll give them a timing tape and a timing tape will show them their fastest and slowest rate positionally. So if their watch gains a couple seconds, they can take that watch off and set it down, crown down, if that's your slow rate. And the watch will actually lose a couple seconds overnight. Or you could turn it, you know, crown up if that's your fast rate, and you're actually gonna gain a couple seconds overnight. But that's a way to keep the watch more precise. That's a very select few people that, that are that interested in having that precision of a watch. You have an engine on your wrist. That's the best way to describe it. You have an engine that's that's releasing power continuously on your wrist. It's in motion 24-7, 365. It's very, very important to have your watches properly maintained by a watchmaker that you trust. Well, it's not always easy to just sit and explain how a watch works. A lot of times it's easier to show how a watch works. So in the coming months, we're gonna be coming out with a new segment on my Instagram showing the different functions of the watch and how, how it works. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like it.